I want to thank you for joining us on this sixth week of Easter. What a wonderful celebration. Here it is today, Tuesday, May the 19th. And so thank you for joining us. We're going to do what we did a couple of weeks ago, just do a short season of prayer and praise and thanksgiving, uh, the reading of a uh, lesson from the book of Acts from Sunday. And I hope that this is a wonderful time of devotion for you today. So let us again begin our worship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, 
Our lesson from the book of Acts is found in the book, or the chapter, 17th chapter, 22nd verse. Paul's in a bit of trouble. Paul, standing in the middle of the Arapachus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I pass along and observe the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, as I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands. Nor is he served by human hands as though he needs anything, since he himself gives all things, uh, men all life and breath and everything. So he made from one every so he made from one every nation of people to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their habitation, that they should seek God and hope that they might feel after him and find him. Yet he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said. For we are indeed God's offsprings. Being then God's offspring, offsprings, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone or representation by the art or imagination of human beings. The times of ignorance of God, the times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all of us everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance and all people by raising this Jesus from the dead. And now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked him, but others said, We will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from amongst them. Some men joined him and believed. Among them Dionysius, an Aeropagite, an and a woman named Damaris, and the others with them. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. What a beautiful lesson about, again, Paul's courage in this great city of Corinth, proclaiming the faith of Jesus Christ, taking advantage of the temple to the uh, dedicated to the unknown God. See, the Greeks wanted to make sure they had all their bases covered. They said, in case we didn't get them all covered, here's one to an unknown God. He says, well, this is Jesus. But of course, you know, Jesus isn't truly represented by works of human hands, certainly not in a temple or a shrine, but the, by the gift of God in Jesus Christ who came to die for us while we were yet sinners. And so we give thanks that, as Paul said, he comes for us all. And for that, we give thanks in this season of Easter. Let us pray. Holy Father, once again, we're so blessed to know that Jesus Christ has come for us, for all people. Oh, not just us Christians, but for Jews and for Muslims, for atheists, for pagans, for agnostics. For you have a heart for everyone. And so we give you thanks that you continue to call, for you are not far from any of our hearts. And so just continue to impress yourself upon us about your great love for us and for this world. And may your healing and your peace be upon us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn for today. I love to tell the story.
that be the story that's on your lips and hearts. May God bless you and send you forth in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.